I'm starting to do the home exercises. I'm starting to do the Jane Fonda program again. I can only get through. Actually, <laughs> it was really tough, but I actually did 10 minutes. It's like 40 something minutes. It's like long. I used to be able to do the whole thing and I, I was never in the best. I was in the best of shape at this point in my life. Um, I was like young adult and um, I was doing the Jane, Jane Fonda complete workout. Um, bring out that chair, <laughs> bring out a chair and hold on to a chair. Remember the old school? And I would do the Stairmaster at the gym. My friend's uncle owned a gym. Oh my goodness. Booty is a absolutely hardcore athlete. I am just so excited because this girl, you know, she's carb loading. She, she ate, I don't know, five or six cups of rice. <laughs> with that paneer and uh we're gonna i know a lot of people have reacted to this but uh i wanted to react and i know she did almost it feels like clickbait um i'm trying to react less to her but uh she has a 2 a.m homemade spaghetti girls obviously eating her feelings anyway this is ray this is life and vibe and today like i said we're gonna take a look at this um 2 a.m. homemade spaghetti, which is absolutely ridiculous because as we all know, Chantal is a type 2 diabetic. She is not under any real physician care, no matter how many times she talks about telehealth appointments. And uh, the reason why I speak a lot about this is because I am a registered nurse licensed here in the United States. I have over a decade of experience working uh, specifically in heart or cardiac cancer, also known as oncology, and uh, often a lot and end of life care, all sorts of stuff. So I have a lot of years of experience and working with patients specifically often with cardiac issues related to their uh, type 2 diabetes too. So yeah, yeah. We'll get the disclaimers out just to make sure we don't get in trouble with Chantel. But this it's this is pretty sad to see. I'm just gonna say. So anyway, it's always just you know I gotta say my fair use stuff. I gotta get it out there. Gotta get the disclaimers out. You know, we I might have to roast her. I know I'm a nurse. I know I'm supposed to be compassionate, but it's really hard when you're about to see this woman try to take her pancreas out. Okay. And then obviously I always want to trigger warning my stuff because the type of eating that Chantel does can be really triggering for people. And so if you do find that you have issues around EDs and stuff, then I would suggest that you just click away and you click away from any content regarding Chantel or Foodie Beauty because she doesn't really care. All right. She's going to, she's going to trigger you all the way. All right, guys, subscribe. You know the score. Give me a like, leave me comments, all that good stuff. It helps. I'm at over 2,600 subs now, so I'm really excited. And we did start the membership program. I've already got nine members. I'm so stoked. So thank you all who have joined the community. And I am planning what things I'm going to be giving to start that off. Okay. Anyway, let's just get over to Miss Chantel. Let's go take a look at this. I'm going to speed her up to... 1.25. Uh, she is obviously, you know, eating, like I said, eating the feelings. So just be aware. Uh, people are like telling her she's not even chewing the food. Oh my goodness. Okay, Chantel. All right, let's just get her up. Let's get her up to speed. Uh, because she goes, you know, we'll just see her speed eat the spaghetti. Fortunately, this thing today. Oh, let me add me at least a little bit here. There we go. This thing today is only uh, 14 minutes long. So we don't have to uh, deal with too much of it. Hello, foodie beauties. <laughs> Well, hello there. But no. Did you know that you can request a private video from me made just for you that you can keep? Okay. Mm. Well, hello guys. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to another video. We have a wonderful spaghetti dinner here. 
with homemade meatballs I made. <laughs> I try. And, oh gosh, so she has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these meatballs out. It's hard to say because she eats out of this platter all the time exactly how much spaghetti. We need to take a look. We're just about to kill this thing with that Parmesan cheese. She doesn't care how much she puts on. And I know here for the cheeses what that could be because it's a hard cheese, Parmesan. Um, and so I think that falls somewhere, not in a meat or a protein girl. I don't think so. I don't know. I think it's considered potentially a high fat. Maybe you could have an ounce of that, but I wouldn't have more than an ounce. She's going to put on more than an ounce. And then the spaghetti. How many cups of spaghetti cooked do we see there? Is that maybe two to three cups of spaghetti? It's hard to tell with the platter and the depth of the platter. But I want to say maybe two to three cups of cooked spaghetti. And recommended would be, you know, a third of a cup because that's 15 grams of carb. So if you are eating, say, two cups, which obviously turns to six, and then you have six times 15, which I'm trying to do the math real quick in my head, which I think is 90, 90 grams of carbs just sitting there and that's at two cups so think if you want to add on another 45 to that that is uh 135 grams of carbs and that's not you know the meatballs you know the meat doesn't really qualify um particularly as any grams of carbs but they're recommended uh should be about um, three ounces or the size of a deck of cards. So, yeah, yeah, I think this meal is going to exceed that. But she has really good reasons to have to eat such a big spaghetti dinner. So, listen out, everybody. Listen out. So, let me just pour some parm cheese. Pour is the good word. She's, she's baked. Bismillah. I'm so hungry. It's like 2 a.m. And I just got back from a five minute walk. Uh, <laughs> hungry at 2 a.m. I'm, I, 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 till I was no longer a night nurse, obviously, I, most of us are sleeping at 2 a.m. I know there are people who, who do wake up and want a little something. My grandma used to eat like little, those little goldfish. <laughs> that was her favorite thing. She'd just eat a couple and go back to sleep. And <laughs> she loved to do that. But a five minute walk, oh, hardcore athlete Chantel over here, I don't think would be uh, <laughs> um, enough to warrant this amount of spaghetti. I don't even know when I was in the peak of my distance running time, of which I did a lot, and half marathons were generally the distance. Is you know, 5K to half, that was, and anything in between were my favorite distances. And uh, I don't think I ever carb loaded like that. And I don't eat meat, so I wouldn't have had the meat balls. I may have done something else, you know, I don't know. But, uh, I don't think that much spaghetti. It's it's supposed to be like, oh God, I can't. But five minutes of walking certainly is not going to burn off this. Okay. And you've already done the walk. This is wild. Okay. Keep going. Um, so I'm just replenishing here. Hey, stinky cheese. What are you exactly replenishing from? A five-minute walk? That's that's just like most of us going around the supermarket. What are you talking about? Replenishment. Seems like you're just sitting here eating your feelings bored because your husband's not at home. So you're mad. And you're mad that something going on. Something's going on and uh, he's not a happy camper. God, your pancreas hates you. 
eating nothing like good old spaghetti and meatballs. Am I right? I mean, not at 2 a.m. like this, girl. This is just sad. And I just keep thinking, is she wanting to become an insulin-dependent type 2 diabetic? Because she's headed that oh. way. I don't understand why she has to be doing all that. Yeah, that's my dog barking in the background. You're going to hear it. Thank you, Junebug. There's nobody at the door. Thank you. It's the neighbors. So how do I make my meatballs? All right. Ground meat, of course. Um, <laughs> some parm cheese, one egg, a salt and pepper, a whole bunch of spices, paprika, cumin, whatever. I blend in the food processor, some spring onion, green pepper, coriander. Yeah, nobody wants your, like, meatball recipe, girl. Because the only thing that seems to probably not have been added to that list was wash your hands first. Ugh, nobody want your meatball, girl. We obviously, the husband's not there. Ugh, must have run out of juice because she would have pulled out juice. It's that sort of night I feel for her. You know, she would have needed to have that vitamin C after all that five-minute walking. <laughs> and that ten minutes of the Jane Fonda workout before she ate that paneer. Or cilantro. <laughs> One tomato. Mm. Okay. And that's why I make them. Okay. Can we speed you along a little bit? Pretty much. <laughs> you can make meatballs with any kind of ground meat, chicken, I'm turkey. Just, I'm curious about anything. the depth of this platter sometimes. It's it's like the never ending platter. I don't know. What is she talking about? I don't know. Let's just get to here. <laughs> she's, she's boring today. <laughs> Sorry, I skipped the recipe. I love parm cheese. <laughs> it just adds so much flavor yeah this is cheesy cheesy spaghetti now girl and most of the time they say that um shredded you know the powder stuff that's just the rind that's not even the good parmesan you're supposed to have a couple of shaves of parmesan on top of it you're not supposed to like annihilate the thing with parmesan cheese that's what children do i used to have to stop kids that i used to be a nanny for throwing this much cheese on their food girl this, this is beyond an ounce of cheese. I mean, you're going to take down the whole thing of parm just in one plate, platter of food plate, platter, I should say. They're soft because I didn't use breadcrumbs, but I don't have breadcrumbs. You don't have any pita bread in the house? You could have tasted and whipped up in a, you know, like a blender? Most people, that's how you can make breadcrumbs, girl. You get a piece of bread and you toast it and then you whip it into the, you know, food mixer or whatever, the blender, whatever. Get it all choppy chopped up. Mix breadcrumbs yourself. Bite, bite, bite. Oh. So I really don't have much to talk about. Um, <laughs> not really any updates for you. What happened to the exciting season three and all the travel plans and all the things? I mean, does everything just have to be a surprise? Couldn't we actually see the planning process of a trip? Because that could be interesting too. But I don't think it's ever like that. I think it's always like the last minute, where are we headed to? And you don't make the money like you used to. When you and Salah went to Thailand, you were sort of getting the high of your channel and your first move to Kuwait and people obviously were more interested but now all you do is sit and eat your feelings all the time so it's become really boring to watch you to be honest and for me as a registered nurse and knowing how many different medical disorders you currently have and then the other things that happen with eating this type of diet which is uh, having metabolic syndrome from type 2 diabetes and beginning to have more atherosclerotic plaque buildup in your arteries, which basically means like you see plaque on your teeth. Well, the plaques also can build up due to excessive fats in the diet, triglycerides, low-density lipoproteins, cholesterol, 
all of these things. And that's going to come from all this red meat that she's eating. And it's going to contribute to an increased risk for those plaque formations inside your literal arteries of your body. And over time, they will collect in one spot. They don't evenly lay tracks down your arteries. They will collect in one particular location until that entire thing is cut off in the flow of your blood. And arteries are pretty important. So they are the parts of your body that take the oxygenated blood around all your body system. Your veins take blood that has been deoxygenated through the arteries as it delivers blood throughout the body and then takes it back up into the heart in order for it to go back through the process of getting oxygenated in the lungs, blah, 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 blah and then taken out in the body. So <laughs> people said they needed me to explain some of the medical stuff. So that's why I gave that slightly longer explanation than I usually would. So, type 2 diabetes even increases the risk of those plaques even more. So, when you already have a diet that is going to contribute to these plaques, probably in your heart arteries, and then causing a cardiac event or a heart event, then diabetes type 2 just kind of adds an extra layer of it happening. In fact, it increases the likelihood of it happening which is why your doctor was trying to tell you when you would, you've known you had diabetes for a long time, but when you finally decided to admit to everybody you had diabetes, that type two, that he didn't want you eating a lot of red meat because he could see that you're probably not controlling your diabetes very well. And so you've got more risk of these types of events happening, but you just don't care. It's pretty obvious. And then you've nothing to talk about because other than food, so we get to watch you take a binge at the moment because, you know, you're a food addict and you don't get proper help. And you're probably going to feel, I mean, I'm surprised you're at, you, in, but you're having to produce content because you got to make money, girl. But this is getting really, like, difficult to watch. But... Yes, I did make this at like two in the morning. <clears throat> you think some people are just like born? Uh, uh, whatever. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure, but not really because your circadian rhythm doesn't work like that. So you kind of teach yourself that patent because it's always shown that people who have to work nights like I used to as a registered nurse I wasn't up eating 2 a.m spaghettis for fun no I was working overnight in an inpatient hospice okay taking care of some of the sickest people at the end of their lives so go why do you keep the slop on your face is this just 2 a.m feeder content because uh, everyone real bored of it it's just you know real bored To be night people. Oh my God, I have a couple of spaghetti. Mm, eats like a toddler. I'm not sure. They say day people are the most successful, like usually, typically, and it's not true for everyone, but I'm generalizing because that's what they say. You know, statistically, that day people are the most productive, they're business people, things like that, entrepreneurs. That's why they say the early bird gets the worm. I prefer to be up earlier. When I was, you know, at the age when you're a teenager, you do have that time where your circadian rhythm is different and you do kind of want to stay up later and wake up later. But that's at that kind of um, sort of period of life, which is why it's so cruel to get high school kids to school really early because their circadian rhythms are a little bit different, which is why parents find it also irritating, you know, because their bodies are in a now circadian rhythm where they're wanting to, you know, go to bed at a good hour and wake up at a good hour, you know, and, but teenagers, that's a whole different thing. So I mean, yeah, and as they always say, Chantel, nothing good ever happens at night. 
my guess is entrepreneurs just get sleep whenever they can. <laughs> they probably barely, excuse me, barely sleep. Um, but the night people tend to be more creative people, like artsy people. I just wonder if she has any statistics on this, <laughs> where she's getting this information from, or is it just being pulled out of Chantel logic? <laughs> I promise you, having worked in healthcare, we, you know, you work nights, <laughs> they're difficult. 12 hours overnight is not easy and it gets longer sometimes. So. No, I'm not artsy. Is social media creation is that art <laughs> it can be not what you do girl <laughs> there is plenty of very creative people uh, that i see on youtube and i don't really go to a lot of other sites i'm sure there's lots of creative folk there too like on the pinterest or whatever girl mm, you're just wild i'm not a creative type so i know my limitations Oh, you need to look at my drink so it makes you <laughs> It was out of view. These are just falling apart. It's not church basement spaghetti, but. Church basement spaghetti. I, I, I'm laughing because I'm not really sure what church basement spaghetti is. I'm guessing it's um for like a cookout or something at a church or i know that i have not not been to church my church they just tended to do the meals differently it was a bigger church they had like like a full kitchen and they would have people cook ahead of time and serve food and it would be really good usually <laughs> i'm just not gonna lie the lady was a really good cook meatballs no not even because i think church basement spaghetti meatballs would be like um I would have to say they probably use, no, I think I was going to say they use frozen meatballs, but I don't think that's true because I think that those, I'm just curious. I thought she was a Muslim Reva now. So why is she talking about going to church and getting spaghetti? Go, go. Is it, was this a Degrassi episode? I'm just kids or is this something that happens a lot in Cornwall, Canada? I'm just curious. You know, friendly, cute old ladies, volunteers who volunteer there probably have a good wartime meatball recipe or something. <laughs> you talking about the Vietnam War? Which were you talking about, girl? Because like anybody. <laughs> A lot of those things would be real old now. My grandmother on my dad's side always used to make the best sweet and sour meatballs. From scratch. They were good. I'm just trying to imagine what a sweet and sour meatball is. Because <laughs> when I think of sweet and sour, I think of like a protein that's been heavily breaded and fried. And then there's like a sauce, that sweet sauce that goes over the top of it. <laughs> that's a sweet and sour taste. I've never heard of a sweet and sour meatball. Interesting. I've heard of Swedish meatballs. The sauce, the tomato sauce. I made it mm, from a jar. You have that jar stuff, or is that from pizza? With I use my food. I love my food processor. Fresh tomatoes that were very ripe needed to be used up. Well, if you have a food processor and you had some some bread, why didn't you toast it in the oven or somewhere and and just make some breadcrumbs ahead of time before you then use the mixer? 
I know you got bread in that house, girl. Oh, she maybe she doesn't because she would have brought some bread out for this meal probably too. Oh, she would have certainly added garlic bread to this. <laughs> if that girl had had some, some Texas toast garlic bread, oh, you know, about two slices would have been sat there. So I thought, how perfect. So I, you know, I grazed my food processor for the garlic first, sauteed it in a little bit of butter and olive oil. Mm, here she goes. Added pureed tomato sauce, fresh tomatoes, a little bit of tomato paste. She has to do that on purpose. I mean, what grown adult just lets the spaghetti drag across their mouth like this as, as they know they're talking on a camera? I wouldn't, I personally myself, this would be my nightmare is having people watch me eat on camera. I don't mind going to restaurants and stuff, but I just feel like it would be so impolite. Even when I live stream for hours, I get scared here having someone just hear me sip a drink for a second. <laughs> and you do get thirsty. But uh, yeah, th this is, you know, this is like, I don't know. It, can we just, just get all bored of this content, please? Just so it can go away. All of the algorithm. Some seasonings. Um. The worst message for health. What else? Ugh. A lot of cholesterol. Yeah, it's very, I can taste the garlic. Yum. That's that's what's in there. Cholesterol. The best smell ever is sauteing fresh garlic. It's so good. And onions. Mmm. Mmm, girl. Added a tiny bit of cream. There you go. To the sauce. The inside of the meatball. Try blending a pepper and putting it in your meatball or meatloaf. Just don't take any recipe tips from this person, please. <laughs> just uh, the only recipe tip is just don't eat like this. This is an enormous amount of food. That should have been a meal for a, a, a few people. Not. You know, that's ridiculous to have that many. I think she saves one meatball at the end, but it's still, it's ridiculous. It's too much. Too much, girl. It has such a nice flavor profile. Oh, God. It really does. <laughs> I guess it added some crunch probably to, to the food, but you're going to have to mix it up. Otherwise, it's going to be very crunchy. I guess you pre-cook it. I don't know. I don't make meatballs. What do I know? <laughs> There's no right or wrong way to make a meatball. It's just add whatever you like. <laughs> yeah, there is a wrong way, Chantel. The wrong way is, is you shouldn't be making meatballs, girl. That's going to contribute to you having higher levels of cholesterol. You're probably not on a statin medication. You're probably getting metabolic syndrome from the dang type 2 diabetes, unmanaged and uncontrolled. And you're, you look like you're filling up with sodium. You look puffy. You're not even wearing your wedding ring. I know everyone's talking about it because you you just either mad at Salah or you were cooking or whatever. I don't know. Your hands look swollen. You don't look good. You haven't seen a dentist in 10 years. There's just you supposedly, you know, self kid a skin lesion that you don't know what it was or was not. You don't get the proper checks you need. And then you've dumped yourself on some family in Kuwait. You're wild. I just, I, whatever. Stop the madness, girl. So I'm always improvising like that. But. I don't know. I used to enjoy spaghetti, but I might not now. I never have very much. It would be, I I like actually the pinna pasta is my favorite. And I like a small amount. I I, I mean, ah, Jesus. This is just so much food. I mean, look at the size of that platter. And she just took the whole thing down. She's got to get quick in because, you know, the girl and the, the you know, the, the hormones that say, yeah, stop the eating haven't quite quick kicked in yet. She could just, it's amazing. 
in 14 minutes, this girl had cleared out, less than actually, cleared out this plate of food. Incredible amounts of food. That is wild. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, God. My pancreas hates them. So yeah. I keep saying it, but it's true. So much flavor. And it's just sad because then she's going to dump herself on a healthcare system somewhere after having been eating like this with the paneer, the tuna subs, the goodness knows rice and fish and rice and more rice and the quesadilla or quesada or whatever she was calling it. Oh my goodness. It's just, it's so much for her organs to manage. She's looking terrible. I mean, really. Already just pale and unwell. Oh, keep going, girl. I tried to clean up as I was going. But let me tell you. <laughs> it's not gonna be the fun part. That's the fun part about cooking, right? No, it's also the fun part about being an adult. <laughs> you got to get the kitchen clean, girl. I understand. But the amount you eat and the amount you should, you know, probably be eating at home, you probably do create a lot of dishes. I can imagine. It's a 24-7 operation in there. <laughs> Especially when you go to huge dinner events like Thanksgiving or Christmas or... I'm full. Like iftar. As an adult, you're expected to, you know, and you should. <laughs> Took that much food to make her feel full. And she'll end up, you know, in about five minutes, like thinking, oh, I probably could finish out that meatball. That meatball is not going to last on that plate. <laughs> you know, <laughs> she'll, she'll find the room in a minute. Not maybe on camera, but she'll find the room. She won't let it go to waste. Help clean. But when you're a kid, like a young kid, you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> well, yes, because you're not of an age to be responsible for things like knives and heavy china. <laughs> but children should be taught at least to pick up their plate from the table and bring it to the sink when they're young and then once they reach a certain age and they can understand how to put something correctly into the dishwasher <laughs> if you're like me you have a method then they can start to help you know unload the dishwasher at least and then you know bring their plates and then as they get older the tasks increase but Chantelle over here wishes she could still be the toddler or the dinner guest at a big festive holiday because there's gonna be lots of food out and just get sit there and just be given food and then not have to worry about the cleanup because you know this girl's never offering to help clean up at those meals it's probably why her family just don't want her around she's just sitting there laughing i bet she's never offered to hey what can i do to help in the kitchen i'm sure those are words that never pass chantelle's lips uh, i used to complain about having to sit at a separate table like when my grandma on my dad's side would throw a christmas dinner for example as a kid all the kids there would have to sit excuse me at like a separate plastic table yeah we all did girl look like a fisher price table set or something well yeah because adults would be well, yeah, because the adults want to have adult conversation and enjoy a drink and stuff. You know, they've been working all day and doing this stuff. They don't want the kids around. That's why they, and the kids have more fun together anyway. We all had to sit at the kids' table. Chantel was just probably upset because they had more access to more food on the adult table. She felt limited on the child's table. She's just terrible. Laughing and drinking and whatever. But they had to clean up. We didn't. <laughs> Anyways, guys, it's a, just a short little mukbang today um i just whipped up something really fast like super fast so i didn't 
film it. I just wanted to get it over with. I didn't feel like filming, worrying about angle, whatever. <laughs> you know? So, but the homemade, like, tomato sauce when it's made with fresh tomatoes and fresh garlic. <gasps> Because that would actually take work and effort, you know, and she just wanted to eat, okay? So when Chantel is going to go eat, it's not because she's trying to create content. A lot of those times, I think, unless you've just got the camera set up and you're showing how you're making your stuff on the countertop with the camera going, and you you know, like a shake. That's why it's more difficult to do cooking type because it's, it is more of a setup. A girlfriend just wanted to eat. So much easier to sit here and just do this, isn't it? So much easier. Um, let me know at the end um, if you think she cleaned the kitchen right after the meal. <laughs> or she just fall asleep. Oh, God. We know she didn't go for another walk. Mm. So good with a splash of cream. Chef's kiss. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you had an amazing uh, dinner, something to eat. And I will see you guys in the next video. Oh, check out my, I had did a live stream earlier. Um, I went to a park with Salah and we went and did a live stream in Kuwait. So if you want to see some of the park, park in Kuwait at nighttime, albeit, um, check that out. And uh, of course, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. All right. No, oh, no, you don't get to go twice. Why does that always happen? <laughs> I don't know how she does that to me every time. She manages to uh, <laughs> always get restarted again. No, you don't, Chantel. You don't get to come back on. All right, guys. Uh, yeah, that was a just terrible, terrible meal. I don't really know what much else to say, except if you are a type 2 diabetic, that would not be a recommended portion of spaghetti and meatball. <laughs> You, a third of a cup is 15 grams. Okay. Just, just, just consider that. All right, guys. Leave me some pots and pans <laughs> in the comment section this time. If you actually made it this far and weren't just as horrified as I was, leave me some pots and some pans. All right, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.